So today we're going to talk about NVIDIA's G-Sync technology, which is probably one of my favourite technologies to ever use as a PC gamer. The G-Sync itself has actually been out for quite a long time. I actually bought my Asus Swift back in August 2014, which is probably one of the first ever G-Sync monitors to actually be released. Now I did actually do a visual video on how to use G-Sync, but to be honest, it was lacking a bit of information and probably one of my worst videos I ever created. So. That's all I'm going to say on that. But of course, we're going to go over touching over things today on how to actually use G Sync and enable it. And of course, what is required to have G Sync as well. Because people are still unsure how to actually have G Sync on their computer. So now the first thing you're going to need to actually use G-Sync on your system is of course a G-Sync monitor. You'd be quite surprised how many times I get comments on that original video every week saying they have the latest NVIDIA graphics card, they got the latest NVIDIA driver and still see no option for that G-Sync in the control panel. And it turns out that you can have a G-Sync monitor after talking to them. Now, you must go out and buy a G-Sync monitor with a dedicated module built in. If you're still using your same monitor what you've had for a couple of years, then you will definitely not be able to go and use G-Sync unless you've purposely gone out in the last year and bought a dedicated monitor with G-Sync built in. You must have a G-Sync monitor to use G-Sync. That's the first thing you need to actually have it. Which of course then leads me to my second thing, G-Sync only works with display port cable interface. Now all the early G-Sync monitors only actually come with a display port cable interface anyway, mainly 1.2. My Asus Swift behind me only has that one interface to use, so I can't use anything else but of course a display port. And the new actual ROG Swift which has just been released, and some of the new models from Dow and uh, Acer and BenQ and such of, may have of course a HDMI, what I've seen of course on websites, I've seen they actually have HDMI ports now as well, and maybe even some DVI ports. If it does have these and you go out and buy one of these monitors and you're thinking about using HDMI cable or something, then don't because DisplayPort cable is the only one what will work with of course the G-Sync. Now if you use a HDMI cable, yes, the monitor will still work, but you won't get that extra benefit of course of using G-Sync. It only works on a DisplayPort cable interface. Which then of course leads me to my third thing that you need a NVIDIA based graphics card with a display port cable interface, mainly a 600 series up based graphics card. So that of course you need at least a Kepler GPU to actually use G-Sync. Now most people are running 700 to 900 series based graphics cards anyway, and most of these what I've seen do come with a DisplayPort cable interface, but you are running the older 600 series card and you'll be able to use G-Sync as long as you have that DisplayPort cable interface. Now, I've seen some mobile boards have a DisplayPort interface as well. If you plugged it into there, yes, the monitor would work and you're probably able to use your onboard graphics on your CPU, but G-Sync will not work. You have to use a NVIDIA based graphics card to use G-Sync with that DisplayPort cable. So now we're going to look at how you actually enable G-Sync on your computer itself. And to be honest, this is the most simplest thing you can do on a computer personally. So first of all, though, I recommend going ahead and downloading NVIDIA's latest driver, just so you make sure you're running the latest one and you have that nice clean off full of bugs. Even if you already got the latest driver, I still recommend going ahead and just installing a new one just to make sure. Now, when you install that new driver, or you actually probably notice anyway in your first turn of the computer one, a little pop-up in the right corner there, pop-up saying G-Sync monitor detected. If you got this and you're in the right direction, you know everything's actually set up correctly. Now, what you've got to do then is go into NVIDIA's control panel in the computer's control panel itself. Once you're in there, of course, you'll notice it says set up G-Sync. You simply click on this and it will say enable G-Sync there. Now, it will automatically default, it should automatically default anyway to be on, but if not, just make sure you actually enable it. And then, of course, you get two options then to use G-Sync only in full screen mode or, of course, window and full screen mode. Now, originally, it was only full screen mode allowed you. And that's the biggest problem people had that they didn't have it on full screen and it didn't work. But now, you can have it in window and full screen. And to be honest, this is a quite a nice feature to have because I use a second monitor. So when I'm watching a film or I've got chat on there or on live streaming, I can actually swap to each monitor to type with somebody and I don't have to exit the game properly by alt tab and out. I can still carry on playing the game using G-Sync. Now, G-Sync never used to like up tabbing out it, when we went back in that game it just didn't like it and started playing up so it's a nice thing Envy actually included that in their new drivers 
And then just of course make sure you go into manage 3D settings just to make sure it's all set up. And you'll notice that my technology now on the global scale is set to G-Sync and that's it. So you know now when you're playing games, it's going to be using G-Sync. Just to make sure even more, go into program settings, of course select any game you want. I've got a size Battlefront there and you'll see now of course it says G-Sync there on my technology for that game. So now when I'm in that game, enjoying it, playing with my friends, I'm going to be using G-Sync and having that ultra gaming experience. So last thing, you're probably wondering what do you do in the game itself? Well, pretty much nothing at all. As long as everything connected right and enabled and via the control panel, all you've got to do is go into that game and enjoy the ultra smooth G-Sync experience. So of course, it'll just work its magic by itself. The only thing I probably would say is make sure that God forbid piece of crap V-Sync is turned off in the game because you're just going out and spend a lot of money on your G-Sync monitor and such. Why ruin it by having V-Sync enabled? Now, some people do have it enabled and G-Sync personally will still take over, but my recommendation is turn that off because G-Sync will do exactly the same what V-Sync does, but a lot better and smoother. Whatever you set your refresh rate of your monitor at, G-Sync of course cap it depending of course you can hit that fps at that refresh rate so if you set it at 60 and your graphics cards can pump out 60 fps in that particular game then you won't see any more than 60 fps of course on that game if you set it to 120 if you're on a shooter or a first person shooter or something and your graphics cards can pump out 120 fps then again you only see 120 fps must note there guys on my particular monitor it only does this in full screen mode now if i put it into window mode it doesn't matter what refresh rate of the monitor i have i notice my fps will shoot well over it to whatever the, my graphics cards can do in that particular game so i just thought i'd to add in on that guys but that's all i have for today so hopefully you actually enjoyed this video please leave a thumbs up if you did and i actually really hope this even how one person actually understand how to uh, enable G-Sync and what's actually required to have G-Sync on their system because a lot of people still don't know how to use it. So if I haven't actually mentioned anything in the video itself and you still want to know about them, please drop a comment below and I'll get back to you ASAP. But that's all I have for today, guys. So I guess I'll catch you next time. See ya.